The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. Right, all right. Welcome back to the Fancy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Vaughn, founder of FancySixPack.net. With me, as usual, or at least uh, not so usual lately, I guess, but uh, for good reason, he missed. But AJ is back. Good on, man. Hi, everybody. Sorry for my absence. It's all right. We will we will excuse you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, glad you're back, man. Um, so usually at this point, because it's about 9.30 on Thursday, the game is probably nearing halftime, or if not at halftime, but the Thursday night game, Bucks and Panthers, had a nice little rain delay, so we're just at the start of the second quarter, tied 3-3, not a whole lot going on yet, both teams don't look extremely uh, sharp, that's my little two cents on it, I don't. It's it's not that great of a game, honestly. Uh, got any predictions on this game, though? It is only 3-3, three, um, three, so it's not like anything's going to give it away yet. I, I feel like, uh, like both teams are going to attempt to score some points, and uh, one will score more than the other, and they'll be the winner. I really it's hope my, there's a tie it's now. My analysis. I really hope there's a tie now. <laughs> Just gotta, just gotta let you know that. Um, all right, so you missed last week, which was a week one show where we usually give our AFC champ, NFC champ, and then Super Bowl champ. So since you did not get a chance to do that, uh, I'm gonna give you, you know, 30 seconds to go ahead and roll through, roll through yours. What you got? Uh, I mean, it's hard to not put the Patriots in to the Super Bowl because they're there every. GD year and I'm tired of it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give the nod to to Kansas City, let them get over the hump this year. Um, hopefully take out New England in the championship game, and then I have them facing. I don't want to be a homer, so I can't can't say the Eagles. I mean, I can. How the hell not? <laughs> can, but um, I mean, I want the Eagles to be there, so I, I would. I would assume that, but I'm going to think, uh, think I'm going to go with new Orleans. Um, so, and then I have Perfect. Drew Brees riding off as the champion beating out Kermit, the frog. I mean, uh, Patrick Mahomes and, um, yeah, I, I don't know if this will be his last year. If, if they win the super bowl, it could be, I mean, he may still want to come back for one more, but, Time to turn it over to Taysom Hill, baby. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so my picks last week, because AJ, you weren't here, were, were actually Kansas City. Although that was before the Antonio Brown signing, so who the hell knows? Um, and then I did pick Philly, but I'm going to pick Kansas City to win because much as I like Philly... I cannot pick them to win the Super Bowl. Sorry. Wait, as much as you like Philly? I as much know. as I like them as a team this year, I do not root for them, okay. clearly. Okay. So That yeah. makes a little more sense. Yes. Um, all right, man. Let's let's get going. We got a, a, a big show tonight, but we've got our favorite segment coming up. That's Beer of the Week. Mm, beer. All right, man. It's been a couple of weeks for you. What you got? Oh, I'm I'm going to double fist here tonight since it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm starting off with a, a very hempalicious malt beverage, apparently, um, that I did not realize when I bought it. I just saw hemp and figured, oh, okay, I've had a couple of these. It looks like it could be good. <laughs> it's uh takes some getting used to. It's called so Hemp Tales. So you're drinking... Uh... Weed Old English. Yes. Nice. Like That's it, man. What it is, That's baby. Uh, we used Malt to do something stupid in college. Beverage. I, do, I do see that. <laughs> um, we used to do something stupid in college on on uh, on road trips with with all my friends, where 
we'd all get together and we would do something called 4040s at 4. So there'd be 40 of us. We would buy 4040s and each drink one, and we would drink them at 4 o'clock. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. Pretty stupid because people started like racing and seeing if it was like who could finish the fastest. Let's just say that did good not, call. Let's just say that did not end well. Uh, yeah, for for those who attempted that. Yeah, so this is a, it's it's, it's an interesting drink. Eight uh, percent alcohol by volume. It's in a pint. But then I've got another one which I believe you've had. It's from your neck of the woods down there at uh, Brookville Beer Farm. The I spin out. Oh yes. New England double IPA. Uh, eight, also eight percent. So I'll be uh, dipping back into that one later. I've already had one of those from that four pack that I bought. That was pretty good. Yeah, those, those are solid, man. Brookfield Beer Farm makes a bunch of good IPAs. So absolutely. That's what you Mine got? Mine is a Terrapin Brewing Company Hop Executioner IPA. Um, I'll be honest, it's a fairly average IPA. Um, it's kind of piney and Almost yeah, like metallic-y tasting. Um, it's all right, though. I mean, I've had way worse. <laughs> uh, but I also have had much, much better. Uh, yeah, it's, I kinda, it's been a while since I've had that one. Yeah, it's, it's not I, I don't remember it being no, my favorite I, either. I got it mainly because I knew it was one I haven't had on the show before. Um, I have had it before, personally, but not on the show. So I'd like to share new beers on the show if I can. I also got it because I want to give a little shout out to, not that I am a huge Maryland fan, and by that I'm not at all, but I got to give shout out to the Maryland, Maryland Terrapins, who have absolutely destroyed the first two opponents they've played in college football, scoring huh. what a combined like 130 something points, like is insane. Um, with, by the way, the old Virginia Tech quarterback. And we're struggling with Ryan Willis. <laughs> awesome. So glad we let him walk away. Yeah, well, didn't he he put himself into the transfer pool? He did because we were going to start like, running oh, over dear. his ass. Uh, dumb. Yeah. Anyway, awesome times for Virginia Tech football. All right, man. Let's let's get this show rolling. Uh, so start here with some news and notes leading up to week two. In oh boy, uh, more Antonio Brown drama. Just when you think it's over, man, it is never over with this guy. Uh, clearly, you missed last week when he finally, you know, I, at this point, man, it was a calculated play in his part. Like, I, I'm totally convinced that that's what it was. And he, you know, could, and he came out and said that he, you know, reached out to social media experts to see what he could do to, like, get cut. And it worked. And now he's with the Patriots. <coughs> Collusion. Um, and... Yeah. Um, so now he's with the Patriots, and then, of course, he misses week one, and then right after week one comes out, it comes out that he has a civil lawsuit against him for, you know, sexual assault and, you know, all that nonsense, right? Of course, he's coming out saying it's not true, and, you know, I, I'm not going to go out saying which side I believe. It doesn't matter, right? It it just... And, and at this point, it doesn't even look like he's going to get suspended because... It's a civil lawsuit, so there's actually no charges. Um, but I don't. I mean, do you have really anything to say to this? Like, it's just. I mean, obviously, it's just news. You got to follow to make sure that those who own him know what to do with him at this point. Yeah, I mean, I. I'm just over the AB drama altogether. I'm so happy that I did not draft him in any of my leagues this year. Yep. And I just, I mean, I didn't really have high expectations for him going to Oakland anyways. So it's just further, you know, puts it out there that it, it's just, you know, it's just a problem. I mean, all, all he's been this whole off season is a problem. Ever since the, the blowout in Pittsburgh, whatever, he missed the meeting or whatever the hell it was that was so stupid. Like, and then they benched the him for the game. last game. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, I don't know, it set something off. So, yeah, yeah who knows? I don't know. It's a, it's a mess with him. Um, 
So yeah, week one, man, we had a lot of uh, we we had a lot of a lot of guys go off that we probably weren't expecting to. A lot of big time, like I feel like a lot of the boom boom bust guys, right? Like they they exploded. You know, you take like Deshaun, you take you take um, you know you Sammy Mark, Watkins, Mark, Sammy Watkins, right? Mark <laughs> Brown, Hollywood Brown, uh, Terry McLaurin, guys that you know you draft because well, you know. Whatever. Well, maybe not Terry McLaurin, but you know these guys. Like you draft them, but you're never really expecting. You don't, or at least you don't know what to expect week to week. So they're kind of hard to start. And guys that I don't draft because of that, and guys that if you know you listen to Bob Lung when he comes on, he he doesn't draft them either for that exact reason. They're inconsistent. Um, but they, you know they all went off. So we had some really high scores for those who actually went out and started them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Were you lucky enough to start any of those guys this week? Uh, I was. I don't own any shares of Sammy, so I didn't have him or or uh, Hollywood. But I owned Deshaun in a handful of leagues, started him, and and rode the wave. It was phenomenal. Yeah, he had an awesome game. Yeah, yeah. The uh, one my it's not really my home league, but it's a league I'm in with a bunch of friends from home. So. I kind of went out and I thought that everybody in the league was really going to go after Eagles and they really didn't. So quarterbacks kind of hung around for a little bit. I went out and grabbed Wentz and then my, I thought my one buddy was going to get him. He took Alshon right after. And then like two picks later, I took Deshaun. I was like, I just want that combination somewhere in a league this year. And it paid off. Uh, I also have Lamar Jackson in that league and he actually outscored uh, Wentz pretty handily but i still won my matchup so i'm okay with it yeah i i don't like i don't have any of those guys in any of my leagues um so and probably never will own any of those types of players i just i just don't do it unless it's best ball like i was happy to go get a lot of those guys best ball but yeah i for whatever reason in the two best ball leagues i'm in do not have any of those guys so the the main topic I want to talk to today with with kind of the week one recap slash leading in the week two here is the running back splits. And this is uh, this is something that, you know, caught a lot of people's attention in the week one. And, you know, obviously it's something you talk about a lot in the preseason. It's, it, it's a big guessing game. Like, what's really going to happen, right? And it got even worse of a guessing game toward the end of the preseason because – we had McCoy move teams. We had Hyde move teams. We had, you know, a whole bunch of different moves like that. And so I want to start here with the Rams because obviously the highest profile running back is on that team, Todd Gurley. And interestingly enough, he saw 70% of the snaps, but he only saw 14 rushes. And to Malcolm Brown's 11, who was actually only on the field for 24% of the snaps. Um, so, you know, you're thinking, all right, I mean, fine, Gurley's still got more of the, more of the uh, you know, more, more of the timeshare there. So it's okay, probably not as much as you would have liked. And he did rush for 97 yards, 101 total when you count the one reception. The big news, though, is that Malcolm Brown stole the two goal line touchdowns. I mean, what do we think about that? I think it's a pretty telling sign. I mean, granted, it's only one week, um, so it's it, you can't just jump ship and say, well, Brown is definitely the go-to guy here. Um, granted, I did put him into the mix on the, the fantasy six-pack running back depth chart uh, earlier today because he's the one that got the touchdown. So you've got to put his name there. Um, I, you know, I still want to see what happens in week two and this could just be a, you know, a mix and I didn't watch this game, so I, I could just be completely way off base here, but in my mind, I'm looking at it as well. If they were longer drives and whatever, Gurley had some bigger plays early and then they pulled him out and then they put, uh, you know, Brown in when they were just right there at the goal line and he got in. You know, the, sometimes that happens. That's a, that's the breaks. But um, again, I, I I didn't see that game, so I have no idea if that's the case. But it could be. Um, but I mean, the seventy twenty four split is is also pretty telling. That 
you know, they want to give Gurley the ball. They want him to be the guy. Um, he does have a lot of mileage on him um, after last year, though. And, you know, I, I, maybe they are going to try to hold back on that. You know, they, if they want him to be their franchise running back for years to come, not just this year and last year. Um, so, you know, they, they've got to give him some some more rest and and let him, you know, not take as much of a beating. Yeah, I mean, I don't it, – it's a tough one, man. I, I did go out and snag Malcolm Brown in a bunch of leagues where I have some garbage at the back of my bench. Um, and, and in a couple of leagues, I actually drafted Darrell Henderson. And, you know, I, I had heard the talk that Malcolm Brown was actually going to be the um, – was actually going to be the handcuff, but mm-hmm. um, you know it, it was it was still like okay, fine. I, I get that Malcolm Brown's a handcuff, but like, do I want to own the handcuff or do I want to own Daryl Henderson, who I thought was going to get a lot of passing down work, and that's where they were going to spell Gurley more than anything. But that absolutely did not happen, and Daryl Henderson got no. Nothing. Um, oh yeah, so, Henderson was not used at all. No, so I went out and snagged Malcolm Brown. Now I have since dropped him in a couple of leagues um, for a couple other people, and I'll get to that news that news later. But you know, he is a guy who I think you can start. And you know, if if those games where they're just like uh, we're just gonna rest Gurley, I think Malcolm Brown's a guy you can absolutely just plug in, right? I mean. And we feel like those games are coming where they're just going to sit Gurley and it's going to be announced early, right? They're just like, oh, we don't want him in this game. We're going to rest him. Like, especially the later in the year when there's record like 10 and 1, right? They're not going to care. Yeah. They're just going to play Malcolm Brown. And especially if it's against like the Dolphins, <laughs> they're just going to they're just gonna be like, yeah, yeah Brown, you no, got this, right? There's no reason to, to you know, risk the injury. Absolutely not to Gurley in a, in a meaningless game. I mean, every game matters, but some matter a lot less than others. So hundred percent. agree. hundred percent. agree. Um, so the next team I want to bring up here are the chiefs who got a lot of, a lot of talk because LaShawn McCoy was drafted. Now there was a lot of talk early on too, because he had, they had Darwin Thompson sitting there, and everybody's going, "Oh no, he's going to be the guy. He he's going to he man, he was getting drafted in like the seventh round. In fact, he got drafted in the seventh round in our league." Yeah, um, shout out Richard. You know, at the time, not a bad move, man. You you know, you had no idea that McCoy was getting traded there, none at all. Um, so of course, Damian Williams' stock fell, and rightfully so. Now, McCoy comes in, everybody's kind of wondering, like, what's the split going to be? You're hearing 50-50, but, like, is it really 50-50? And, you know, sometimes it's hard to hard to tell. Like, snap count might just mean that they got him on the field because he's better at pass pro, he's better, you know, he's better out of the backfield catching. But actually rushing the ball, let, let's put this out there, right? Williams was on the field 66% of the time, had 13 rushes, 6 receptions. I think that's big. McCoy was only on the field for 29% of the time. Now, he's been there, like, what, a week and change at this point? Not even? Yeah. A- actually, at that point, not it, even. I don't um, Not even a no, week. So, wasn't. the fact that he got 30% of the snaps is probably pretty big. And then, on top of that, he basically rushed almost every time he was on the field. He got 10 mm-hmm. rushes. Um, yeah. And he took those for 81 yards, as opposed to Damian Williams, 26 now, you add on Williams' six receptions, and I didn't put the yardage down in my notes, but, um, you know, pretty even there between the two. I do think this means that Williams is going to be the guy catching most of the passes out of the backfield, but as far as, like, a timeshare, like, this really, really hurts Williams big time. Um, I mean, what it, who, who, like, where would you rank these guys kind of, like, Let's just say like a like a like an even opponent, like down the down the middle opponent, right? Defense wise, where would you rank these guys? You know, running back two, three range, four range. You know. Yeah, I I mean until Williams shows that he's not at a running back two status, I'm leaving him there. Uh, I mean that's where he was drafted. I mean, some some people draft him as a running back one, depending on 
where they fell in a draft. Well, and when you drafted. Uh, Well, exactly. So, uh, I mean, I I still like him to be the lead guy, especially if he's getting the passing work. You know, we talk about PPR and half PPR all the time, and and it's just part of the game now, it seems like. I, I don't even remember the last time I played in a league that was a standard league. Um, but McCoy's value, you know, he knows Andy Reed. I guarantee you that Reed brought plays with him from his Philly days and tweaked them a little bit here and there. Plus we already know that he's like the running back whisperer for whatever reason. So, <laughs> um, you know, his I running back succeed in general, dude. No. Yeah. I mean, it's a high power offense. There's a lot of weapons. Um, but now you're looking at, at Tyreek Hill um, being out for four to six weeks, which we'll get into later. Uh, you know, that opens playing time up for, for McCoy potentially. Um, you know, the fact that Shady has an 8.1 yards yeah, per I mean, rush, that's not going like, yeah, to maintain. Um, but, but, yeah, no, impressive nonetheless. I mean, it just means he's not washed up, and it means that yeah. offense is incredible. Right? It just opens up lanes for running back. But Macy's not washed up, and I didn't think he was. I just thought Buffalo was pretty garbage for like pretty much he, anyway. And you look well, at the he Buffalo. He didn't want to be in Buffalo. Sucked, you know, he he played his entire career, like from Pop Warner to the NFL in the state of Pennsylvania until he got traded. So, you know, he obviously had uh, some grudge, uh, you know, revenge built into it and everything. And he was, he performed in Buffalo, you know, for the, the first, I think it was first yeah. year. He was really good. He's awesome. And then, you know, injuries kind of hurt him a little bit, literally. And then, uh, you know, this just rejuvenated him, I think. And for whatever reason, everybody was just down on Williams anyways. And like you said, it was the Darwin Thompson train. And now he's droppable. I mean, Oh, if he's, yeah, if he's yeah, still yeah. even owned at this point, I, I you just have a deep bench and you're hoping for, you know, whatever. But yeah, you're in dynasty leagues type of things if you got down on top yeah. of your team. But yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I agree with you. Williams is, at this point is a, a running back two at worst, a running back three. Yeah, McCoy, um, I'd say, is, is right like now a three guy. and a flex. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, just right now because it's still kind of unknown, like, if I ever, if I said McCoy was any higher, it would just me be, you know, pulling pulling shit out of my ass. Like I'd be totally yeah. Guessing. You're just speculating because he hasn't point. he hasn't done anything to prove that. Um, yeah. Yes, eight point one yards per carry is awesome, but let's be real, that ain't happening again. Um, and if he's only going to be on the field for thirty, you know, at most thirty five percent of the snaps, only getting ten rushes a game, like that's not enough to vault you higher than that. Um, now if he starts catching past the uh, yeah backfield then we'll need to talk later about it. So um, the next team, another one who got a lot of, a lot of uh, attention late in the preseason because of a trade, is Houston. Now, of course, Lamar Miller was there. They traded for Duke Johnson. Lamar Miller gets hurt. They bring in Carlos Hyde. Again, another one of these situations where it was like, what's really going to play out and how, right? Um Everybody thought this was a Duke Johnson show still. Like, Harlow's Hyde's kind of a guy at this point, right? Um, so, you know, whatever. Now, you look at it, though, and if you just look at snap count, Hyde 37 to Duke 62.7, you're thinking, oh, well, it's, it's still the Duke Johnson show. However, nope. Hyde got 10 rushes, Duke got 9. Hyde even got a reception. Now Duke got four. Um, Hyde rushed for 83 yards. Duke got 57. Uh, I did not put the reception stats down for some reason. Like I said, I, for some reason, not write down the, the reception yards. But, I mean, to me, this just screams 50-50 split. Um, and, you know, Duke's been there a little bit longer at this point, so maybe that's why he got more of the, of the, uh, the snaps. Over Hyde, I, I still think that might still be more the case because Duke is going to be in on those passing downs more so than Hyde would. But, I mean, this really limits the value on 
honestly, both of them. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I own Hyde in a couple of leagues. I don't own Johnson anywhere. Um, you know, I was interested in him when he went to Houston as the main guy, and then boom, you know, now Hyde's there. So you also kind of got to look at, at what history has shown us, and Hyde has been kind of average throughout his career. I mean, he had some flashes in San Fran, um, and he looked pretty good on uh, on Monday. That game was phenomenal, by the way, but... <laughs> they had, it was, it was, I don't know if it was it, phenomenal, it was, it was wild. Uh, it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I loved every minute of it, so... Um, mostly just the last couple, but, uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a similar case with McCoy, you know, once Hyde starts getting into this offense and recognizing these plays and putting things together, I, I think it will be a pretty even split. Um, and that's okay. I mean, you're, if you have two good starting capable running backs, yeah, use them both where where the, you need them. Keep them both rested, and hopefully they'll be there all season. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you're right. High's been average, you know, at least for the last few years. I mean, when he when he was in San Fran, he was a beast. Um, uh, but you know, late lately he's been moving around. Oh my god, he's fifth team in the last like two and a half, three years, or whatever it is. I forget. Uh, but I mean it. He's always just there, right? He always just kind of, you know, always always gets yardage. It just seems like it, he's just kind of there, like, ruining a running back backfield, you know, for you. So, I, I guess both guys are useful as far as, like, you know, running back three flex-ish type of range uh, if you need it. But that's all it's going to be at this point until maybe one gets hurt or something like that. But who, who knows, man. Um. So we're going to move on to two teams. We'll start with, with your hometown, Philly. And, dude, these teams are an absolute mess. I have no idea what to make of these. So I'm going to give you I, – I didn't even write down the stats for these because it didn't even matter. Right. Neither, neither guy did much of anything. It doesn't matter. But Sanders, right, 48% snap count. So awesome. Howard, 22. Sproles, 30. Why? Um, then if you look at the amount of rushes, it's 11 for Sanders, 6 for Howard's. Sproles got nine. And then, and I, yeah, I keep pausing because I'm just shocked every time I read these. Um, the receptions, one, two, and three, no big deal. Um, dude, why is, why is this such, why is it a three-man backfield? Like, Sanders should absolutely be getting more of this, right? I mean, am I missing something here? No. Um, I, I mean... I don't, I don't get it. I'm, I'm just as baffled by it. I, I think part of it might have been because Washington came out so fast and put up points early. I think that could have altered the, the game plan pretty quick for Philly. Um, I mean, I wasn't really worried that they would lose the game, but I think it definitely had an effect. It just seemed like it was... Carson Wentz and and the receivers, you know him and Deshaun and um, yeah. or Djax, whatever, and then oh yeah, Deshaun and and Alshon. So, I mean, Ertz was like a non-factor in this game too. So, I just feel like it 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 turned into a pass-heavy game for whatever reason. I mean, I mean they were down what seventeen at half. Four, that makes yeah, sense. Uh, or did they yeah. score in the second? No, I, I, think, I forget. I thought they had a field goal, but I, I think at one but point it was like twenty to big. three. They came out in like first play of the second half. Like Sean Jackson got open deep, and I was like, "Oh, okay, here it goes." <laughs> yeah, I knew it was common. Um, yeah, I mean, I I do think that Sanders should be the lead guy. You know, Howard is is kind of a nice number two, but I feel like he's, he's almost going to be more of a change of pace back. Um, he did have some pretty nice like moves when he was in open space, um, but they were short lived. So, you know, hopefully he can build on that. 
Um, Sproles, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. I just, I, I don't even know. He's, to me, <laughs> he's the receiving back and, and a special teams guy, um, you know, for punt returns or whatever. And I don't even know if he's doing that. So I just feel like uh, they decided, well, we're giving Sproles another chance. He's, He's coming back, you know. So let's I, let's I guess, throw him man. out there. I mean, I mean, yeah, what? I, like, uh, as much as one you week, don't want to see so, people get hurt, he'll get hurt in week three. I mean, this is what he does, right? I, so, yeah, potentially. So quite Hopefully possibly off to five. a worse <laughs> a worse backfield. Everybody that like everybody that watched the Thursday night game was screaming at the television to let David Montgomery run the ball more. Yet the Bears did not see the same thing that everybody else was seeing for whatever reason. Um, in fact, you know, Cohen was on the field for 16, almost 70% of the plays. Montgomery was on there for 38% of the plays. Mike Davis was on there for 56% of the plays. Um, Montgomery still had more actual carries than any of the three with six. Cohen got zero. So there goes that value, by the way. Um, Mike Davis had five. Now, Cohen did catch eight passes. So I guess he's the Bears James White now. Um, and then Mike Davis had shockingly six catches. I actually had to like double take that one. I had no idea that he caught six passes. Um, I mean, I'm watching this game, and yeah, Montgomery's yards per carry, he didn't have the total stat line. The Bears' offense just was not clicking on Thursday. Montgomery actually, just by far, looked like the best running back. When he got room, you know, he could make plays, he was running over people, he was missing the people miss, to where Davis was just kind of like running into people. Like, that's what he does, right? Um, I mean, my, my thought is that this is going to cut same thought with Philly is that they're eventually going to shift this more toward Miles Sanders as the year goes on. I've got to think the bears do the same thing with David Montgomery, but who knows, man, with three people that are split and carried against, like, can can you trust starting them at this point? Like, or who would you trust starting at this point? I guess is the question. I, I mean, I almost trust Davis the most. No, no. I, I don't, I don't know <clears throat> why, but I, I, I mean, I just feel like he performed the best. Um, you know, obviously the receptions for Cohen are, are awesome, but if he's not, also adding anything to the running game, then he might as well just be a receiver. Um, so he's he's not really giving you an RB two, you know, position. Um, now that could change, obviously, but I don't know if it needs to because they have Davis and Montgomery to run the ball. So I, I mean, it, that backfield just worries the hell out of me. I don't know what what to think of it right now other than that was just an ugly game and I'm glad that I was in the car driving and not having to watch it because it wasn't even worth watching uh, other than the last four minutes that I did end up catching. Yeah, it was, it was pretty boring. We were we were commenting on the game uh, last week during the during the show and much like this one, pretty awful. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, this one, this one's not too, not too fun. Uh, although the Bucks are moving the ball right now, they're on the uh, Carolina 25. But I mean, end of the second quarter, it's six to three right now. So yippee. Um, I like defense, but I also like it when the offenses actually look like they know what they're doing to make the defense defenses like have to try. This does not look like that right now. All right, man, yeah, so it's interesting, you know, got to watch out for these backfields, you know, unfortunately, if you drafted guys like Miles Sanders or David Montgomery, you know, you, you got you got to hold, um, you know, it, Jordan, 
you've really just got to hold all these guys. Like, let's see how it shakes out. It's only week one, or now week two. Um, there's going to be injuries. You're going to need bye week fill in. These guys are going to be useful at some point. Maybe not quite the way you hoped. But, um, you know, we don't always get everything right, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, you, you, I, I, let me ask you this one last question about all of this. With the exception of Gurley and, let's say, Williams, who's the one running back on this list that you'd rather have out of the rest of them? Honestly, probably shady. Really? Uh huh. All right. Mine is still David Montgomery. I still think the Bears are gonna figure out how to unleash him, dude. He, I watched him in college. That dude is just crazy good when he's on the field. Like his, his, uh, you know, his testing and and that kind of stuff don't jump out at you. And but when he is on the field, and it showed, like when he got some space, he was you know, like I said, he was making people miss. I think the Bears are going to realize this sooner rather than later and get him the ball. A, a close second would be Miles Sanders to me. Um, Howard Howard's boring, dude. Howard sucks. Uh, Just yeah. know, use him as like a you know Sanders needs rest, and Sprawls is a good like get him catch out of the backfield guy. Fine, I get it. But nine rushes? No way. Um, so I mean, you know, I could easily flip Sanders and and and, and Montgomery, but I think in the long run, at the end of the season, we're all gonna go, man. I wish I had more shares of David Montgomery than, than we all do. So, yeah, possibly. I mean, I just think the the like I said, just the reuniting with Andy Reid and potential for that offense to to really get going. Um, I just I like his ceiling. Um, you know, the other guys obviously have really high ceilings as well. I just think McCoy's got the better floor right now. Better floor. I can see that. I don't know if he's got the highest ceiling. I think Sanders and Montgomery definitely have the highest uh, ceiling. Oh, no. I don't, I don't think he's got the highest oh, ceiling okay, of sorry. the three. I misheard no, I, I think, yeah, I just think he has a high ceiling as well. Those guys yeah. I do think have better ceiling, but you know, I'd rather start at the ground right now and and see what happens. I think all, f- you know, both Philly and Chicago will figure things out for sure. But yeah, the um, coaches are too good not to not to figure this out. Yeah, exactly. So all, all right, right, so we got a lot of injuries this week, and you know, just in the last couple of days, we got more. So uh, even this morning, which was interesting. So I'm gonna lead with those. Hunter Henry has a Tibia, Plato, a knee. A knee fracture, dude. Um, <laughs> I'm not even trying to pronounce that. Plateau. The Saint, he is not, yeah. You're right. <laughs> I just felt like maybe it was supposed to have been pronounced a different way. Um, you know, they're, they're saying he's not done for the year. He could possibly return. Who knows? Who is that, Godwin? Who, who just scored? Who is that? Who is that? Bam. Is that Godwin, number 12? Write it down. Tampa Bay. Touchdown. Yes. All right. Now that anybody's watching this live. Um, Next Gen Stats, baby. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, you know, they're saying he's not done for the year, but, you know, I, God, this, this Chargers team is getting he's done. beat up, you know, beat up left and right, man. It's pretty crazy. So, uh, that, that's, a, that's a big one. They don't really have a good, I mean, Virgil Green, I think, is their back number. Now, I don't think there's any way they bring back Antonio Gates. I've heard those rumors, but... <laughs> bring him on. No, God, leave yes. him off. Leave him no, off. Bring no, bring him on. He's not on the He's not on the TV. He's not doing the, oh, the uh, announcing. It doesn't matter, man. He didn't take a year off like Witten. Look at Witten. He came back and he had himself a game. Okay. Moving on. Gates, baby. Uh, I'm going to stick All with day. the same team and actually jump down to the bottom of my notes. And yeah, Mike I'd Williams. Yeah, might as well. Um, he, apparently, he you know, injured his knee in week one. And it there's not a lot of information about what this injury really is. You just hear that the coaching staff is worried. And there's, there's really no timetable. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that he's 
out this week at this point. Um, I still have him ranked, but really low. Because I think if he does come on the field, he's not going to do much. Like, this knee injury just worried me. Um, and it's a shame. I liked Williams big time coming into this year. I own him in yeah. multiple leagues. Uh, he stepped yeah, up my, big time uh... last, last year with Tyra Williams still there. And then Tyra Williams being gone and Gates gone, I was like, well, okay. Uh, Mike Williams is going to do some big things. Uh, and then, you know, Gordon gone as well. So, man, Mike Williams could be like a wide receiver too. Um, maybe not, but close. Um, yeah, I think so, it was definitely borderline right yeah, there. I mean, he, he had weeks last season Phenomenal. where he was awesome. So Multiple touchdown passes in a couple uh, different weeks. Just, and he was, he was a, he's just a big body to receiver. You know, not the fastest guy out there, but, but that could definitely get some stuff done. Um, you know, when he's on the field. So, uh, yeah. it's unfortunate, man. Uh, it's I, just another blow to my Scott Fishball team. Oh, man. Your Scott Fishball team is so team is <laughs> Absolute garbage right now. I mean, that's what happens when you do jobs in July. Like, I don't... It's like, it's like the dumpster that the fire doesn't even want to go into because it's just like, nah, nah, I'm good. I'll, just, know, it, I'll, it's I'll one, sit over here. It's one thing, like, you know, I see a lot of people, like, you know, they toot their own horn because they draft them in July. You know, they, they draft these sleepers who then become, like, you know, the starter or whatever, right? You know, maybe an injury or just death chart changes. You know, so, like, oh, man, I, I had the, I had the, you know, I could tell the future and go see, you know, see that this guy is going to be awesome. All right. Well, when you draft 24 rosters, roster spots, you're going to take chances on guys. And yes, kudos for doing what you did. But like your situation is exactly why drafting in July sucks ass <laughs> because you lost the luck. You lost falls. You might have, you might, might have. Oh, I didn't even have to... falls there. I, I wish I had falls. No. I, thought you did. I wanted him. I have Flacco. Oh. oh, that's right. So he was my third quarterback because way, it was man. just fell. You, you've 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 taken a lot of blows on that team. So, but again, like that is one of the reasons why drafting in July isn't awesome. I'm gonna still do it, but it's just oh, yeah. you know, get, get another not? invite. I'm absolutely doing it. But uh, you know, it's I still don't. just well. I'm not just saying just Scott Fishbowl. I'm just saying drafting in July. I, it was multiple oh, yeah. that I drafted in July, just mm-hmm. because. Anyway. We gotta move on. We got a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. So now we All got right. multiple injuries for the Jets. Sam Darnold has mono. Uh, he's gonna be out multiple weeks. Ooh. Mono e mono. <laughs> I saw people on Twitter just be like, "He's a kissing disease," and I was like, uh, "God, oh, idiots." Anyway, yeah. Twitter is full of idiots. I'm sorry. Like it really is. As much as I love the 700 new followers I got this past week, thank you, everyone. You just lost 600 of them. I just lost them all by calling <laughs> them all idiots. But uh, <laughs> don't worry. They don't know about it. Um, yeah, so this is a huge blow to the offense, man. Um, yeah, Trevor Simeon is going to step in and Ugh. Trevor Simeon, not good. Like, I, I, I almost feel like. Where's Brock Osweiler? I mean, you know, let's let's just make this Denver 2.0. You, you almost made me spit out my beer. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Come I was on. thinking about that. Like, who could they trade for? Like, who? There's got to be a backup somewhere. I actually want to see a a little meme or something like a little house on the prairie with Brock Osweiler and Kyler Murray because I feel like they're clearly two feet difference in height. Between the two of them, it's very possible. So that that would be fun to watch. I, I don't know, I don't know where that came from, but um, yeah, I mean this this sucks because I have Crowder and actually had him on my bench last week on my one team, and he blew up. Catches. I was like, oh, Whoa. thanks for that, Cleveland. Um, Who knew though, man? Nobody, nobody Yeah, about. Anderson. Uh, this just hurts these guys. Um, hopefully, Simeon. Can not be Simeon, um, and and come in and be a little bit of a like McCown, um, but you know the the bigger thing to look at here, well maybe bigger, I don't know. They're both huge. Is Lev Bell? He's getting yeah. an MRI on his shoulder, um, and uh, as of uh, 
I guess, earlier tonight. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN said that the MRI revealed no major damage or tears, um, but the test was more precautionary than anything. Um, it sounds like it could just be some soreness. You know, it, I don't want to say you had to see this coming, but the guy's been out of football for two years almost, um, it seems like. And, you know, you it's, not, a, it's not a either, surprise. So. Yeah, it's not a surprise. Um, so it's a shame for all those people that drafted him in the first and second round. Another guy I wanted nothing to do with and do not own. Just for the hell of it, but whatever. Yeah. So, um, you know, Ty Montgomery, I was asking about dropping him on, on fishbowl. Glad I did not because he could be the next guy, you know, to, to come up and, and actually play. And that's the whole reason I went out and got him in that league. Dude, I actually got Ty Montgomery in all of my redraft leagues today. This nice. news broke, and I like went out and was like, and I, I mean, I even sat on pick it for up, an pick hour. Up, pick up, pick up, pick up. I even went out. I even sat on it for an hour because I was busy. And also, I was like, oh, wait, maybe I should go look and see if Ty Montgomery is available. And I went out in every single league, and he's sitting there, and I'm like, oh, add, 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 add. <laughs> like, okay, busy, busy, like the owl in the Tootsie Pop commercial, counting your new followers. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Fantasy Pros. Um, so, all right, moving on here. Uh, San Francisco, Tevin Coleman, a high ankle sprain, going to be out multiple weeks, obviously. I mean, Brita could absolutely smash if, you know, if he stays healthy. Uh, that's a problem for him he, as well. He so. was listed as questionable today, too. I mean, he got banged up last week as well. Uh, yeah. I believe. I mean, he's banged up every week. Like, he gets breathed on. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. My my arm hurts, guys. Sorry. Um. So Raheem Mostert is a guy that I think should be owned in a lot of leagues. It's like a it's like a handcuff for now at this point. Um. By the way, man, Joey Joey Sly hitting a hitting another field goal. Go home. Yeah, just saw it. Pretty awesome. Just I'm saw it. I meant to snatch him up this week because the auto kicker and he sucks. Um. It's three for three now. I know, man. It would have been awesome. Uh, and then I could have rooted for a hokey. It would have been good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's San Fran. Uh, you that's Tyreek. Yeah. Sorry, that's the story there. I mean, uh, they lost McKinnon already to his second knee injury out for the season. Year, man. Like, and now it's Coleman. Uh, deja vu, man. It is. So... Um, but yeah, you're saying I mentioned Tyreek Hill. Yep. Uh, he's got the collarbone injury. It's out four to six weeks. Um, I mean, do we really think Sammy Watkins is going to blow up again? Is it Miko Harbin time? I, I don't know. I, I think I, I mean, like Watkins I think you've got to start Watkins if you have him now at this point. Harmon's sort of oh, yeah. a flex guy at best. Uh, kind of a wait and see, in my opinion. Watkins is 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 fine to start, but I, I still don't trust the guy. I honestly, I just don't. I mean, this offense could be different for Watkins if he is the true number one, like as we saw last week, but um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It Watkins is the guy that I just don't like for whatever reason. Uh, it, it's just so Probably lack of performance. It's just so um, inconsistent, man. Great just, college career didn't translate to the NFL. Course, uh, I mean, uh, we've seen it all. Yep. So uh, Nick Foles on the IR. It is Gardner Minshew time. Probably mm. the greatest name ever for an NFL player. Um, really funny is somebody posted in our in our uh, Slack channel here. Uh, a quote from Gardner Minshew. Who knows if it's made up, but even if it is, it's still funny. It says, it calls the shots now. I'm just along for the ride. Gardner Minshew on the elegance of his mustache. <laughs> like, that's awesome. That makes me just want to put him on my bed uh, just to have him and be like, I own Gardner Minshew. Um, I should probably make his picture somehow the like league photo for my sleeper league my home league 
because it's called I must ask you another question oh, and it has totally been good. it's it has been that for years but it was <laughs> I must ask you a question like <laughs> five years ago and now it's I must ask you another question I remember seeing the guy warm up on Sunday and being like holy crap you see the guy's stash it was fantastic it's all awesome. business man it's so good don't mess around in Jacksonville yeah, you got big dick awesome. Nick you got the stash pretty good yeah. man. Uncle um, Rico's coming in next Uncle Rico's coming in <laughs> got fishbowl um uh, yeah, Joe mixed in high ankle sprain, questionable, or not high ankle, just an ankle sprain, questionable to play this week. Um, you've got to get Geo if you've got mixed in. If you don't have mixed in, I kind of pass on adding Geo because he's really kind of worthless if you don't play him in front of mixed in. Um, and if you got trash on your bench, fine, pick him up. Because, uh, yeah, if mixed in doesn't play, then Geo's a guy that you can absolutely trust, but it's just, I don't know. It is nothing that I get super excited about. Um, Darius Geis, here we go again, man. Meniscus injury, meniscus tear at this point. Um, has surgery today to trim a torn meniscus. Um, it's with Dr. James Andrews, who performed the procedure. He's out indefinitely. There's, Although I've heard indefinitely, but then I've also heard like six to eight weeks type of thing. Um uh, I, I'm probably cutting him anywhere I have him at this point um, in a redraft league. At keeper leagues, I think you hang on to him just because, you know, he's he was talented, man. When he's on the field, he's talented. There's no doubt about that. So you feel bad for the guy, ACL tear last year. Now, meniscus injury, you know, what's this guy got to do to get some luck, man, to get stay on the field for longer than, like, a, a, a freaking quarter? Um but we're back to Adrian Peterson. You know, hopefully he's not, well, I don't know, maybe actually hopefully he is pissed off and he just goes off. But uh, I'd like to see that, you know, as a Redskins fan, I guess. Uh, so, you know, him, him and Chris Thompson get get a big boost in value there. Uh, Kiki Kuti is questionable still, dealing with his foot ankle injury. Sterling Shepard is likely out after suffering a concussion. And then Devin Funches on the IR with a collarbone injury. That's like the third collarbone injury that we've mentioned this week, by the way, if you have not picked up on that. Pretty crazy. Um, they did make him eligible to return week 10, but he's, he's cuttable. He wasn't anybody that you were really begging on anyway. Uh, this, something that I uh, decided to do this year is – Instead of our normal like waiver pickups, because you know it's Thursday, you've probably had your waivers by now. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Scott Fishbowl waiver review, and and this is just interesting. They they run the kind of middle of the day Wednesday, and so you know we get all the stats. Um, and so just a little refresher for everybody: it's it's a hundred dollars fab for the entire season. Now we've got what twenty is it twenty two roster spots or twenty four? In that league. Uh, and which one? It's got fish bowl. Fish? 22. 22 roster spots. So it's deep, man. The 12 team leagues. Um, so you've got to be aggressive if you like, like it. Bowl's 24. Yeah, that's where it is. Yeah, it's also best ball. That's why. So this week we saw Garner Minshew go for $68 on average. Now he was only picked up in like 98 of the leagues. And I believe that's. I believe there's a hundred leagues. If I do the math right, uh, so he was either owned or people just fell asleep in those leagues. Um, I mean, I did not put a claim line on him. I have four quarterbacks. I don't care. Um, I did. I think I only put like twenty six or so. I knew I wasn't getting him. No, I, I, I put thir- I put thirty six. I put thirty six like, on him. Yeah, nah. Um, Trevor. Uh, McLaurin went for $62 on average, which is a guy that I was going to put some money on, but I don't know. Something I I like McLaurin, and I, and I think he's worth going after, but $62, man, like there was no way I was getting him. Like, I don't trust the Redskins offense that much. Um, seven, seven targets is cool. I, I like that a lot. I just don't know if that's what the Redskins are going to be this year. 
Um, so, uh, the other two names that kind of called out to me were Danny Amendola for 18 after having a huge week one. Um, it's then, 13 targets, man. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy. They passed the ball 45 times, man. I don't know if I can believe that's going to happen again. Um, that's and then obviously, Raheem Mostert went for 16. Um, so, I don't know. Anybody else kind of call out to you out of the list here? I didn't really see anybody else that like, was kind of like, oh, yeah. man. I mean, I I was debating on going after Sproles even after the first waiver. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to put money on him, and he made it through again in my <laughs> league. So I was like, wants should I just add this guy at this yeah. point? I mean, I no, but it, I it's not even – it's eight bucks isn't, isn't bad. So. Yeah, Philip Dorsett, I noticed, was picked up for $10, which is interesting. I wonder if people were doing that mm-hmm. because – they're thinking like, oh, well, now that the AB news is going down, maybe he's actually not going to come in for Dorsett actually has value. I don't believe that. And he kind of does because no. I, they got rid of Demarius. You know, they sent him and his mono to New York. Um, now he's, you know, going viral there. But what's more he going to be, one. like $10? Or he's a $10 wide receiver for potentially. And actually, if you count uh, James White and Burkhead, he's a wide receiver six. So who really? who's the third guy ahead of him? If AB Demar- plays, oh well, if if Gordon, AB plays, Edelman, yeah, oh AB, absolutely, White and yeah, yeah, yeah. Burkhead. No, like, I'm, I'm saying if he's $10 not, he's not there. Yeah, so yeah, but how many games is Gordon gonna play? Who, dude, who knows? I mean, like, he I'm could not... he could be up on the exempt list after week. Three with AD, of course. And I'll just go oh, I mean, sit in the cryogenic chamber. Like, you gotta and take shots fucking cloud like the this. thing. Yeah, you gotta take shots and things like this. But that's not what I was gonna. I was willing to do. This, no, there will I'd... be somebody later that I'm like, man, we're trying some money left. I guarantee it. Yeah, I say that, and I'm a Gordon owner in multiple leagues, so I don't <laughs> want to go out and get Philip Dorsett because it's like I don't want to have two receivers. I don't like always having two receivers on the same team. A receiver and a tight end I could deal with, but – and it's the Patriots. So, Philip Dorsett had a great week one. He's not going to have that week again no. until week six. I know, but he's I, it, it, it's, it, That's it. And everyone's going to start him for three weeks. He's going to do nothing. He's going to hit the hit the waiver wires, and then he'll have a blow-up game again. And everyone's going to be like, damn it, oh, I should have fucking started him, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to go pick him up again and waste another 20 bucks on him. Yep. Um, so, all right. So, you, you got but yeah, I mean, but... I mean, of the ads, that's that's really it. I mean, H- Higby is kind of surprising to me. Um, I feel like Everett was supposed to be the guy. Uh, but I think he still will be. I think he will be, too. You know, it just... Again, it might have been a matter of who was on the field at the right time. I, I don't know. Yeah. Drop wise, I, you know, Anunwa, another jet that's injured. He's on the uh, of the year. Yeah, another neck injury. So he he's done. Funchess is an injury, so that's not a surprise. I mean, none yeah, of those guys no, are really none surprising of the drops really shocked to see. Me. I, the one guy maybe Matt Lacoste, just because. It is that tight end. Um, yeah. You know, it is the tight end heavy league. Uh, so I was kind of shocked to see people give up on a tight end. And this league as well. Like, I think this league still could be something. Um, although he did kind of bang up his knee again. So who knows there. Um, anyway. Um, all right. So we're going to close out here with our week two picks. And start here with our highest and lowest scoring games. Um, I'm going to go first. I, th- I think yeah. I took some of the, the easier took ones. Took the here. easier ones. <laughs> Sorry, I, took the I was like, ones. oh, I forgot about putting these in earlier yeah, today. And I was too, like, honestly, damn it. I looked at it. So, Saints and Rams, kind of a no brainer. Uh, a no brainer pick here. There's a couple other ones that I liked. Um, and not so much just from like a total like NFL point, but I mean you're talking two of the best offenses in, in the league. Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, obviously gonna go go crazy. 
the Rams, um, even with half a girly, can still do damage. Uh, that receiving core is just top notch. Uh, Golf can can get it done. Get you know use those guys to his, his um, to his advantage and and just put up a bunch of fantasy points all around. So I like that game. Uh, my lowest game is 49ers and Bengals. I mean, the 49ers just look like an absolute train wreck, dude. Um, I, I, maybe it's the running back injuries. I, I have no idea what's going on with them. Uh, Garoppolo, maybe not quite fully back. It just, it's bad. And then the Bengals, yes, John Ross went crazy along kind of with Dalton in week one, but you know, Ross again is another one of those like boom bust guys that I just don't think can be consistently good. Um, with mixing kind of banged up that, that offense, I just, I just don't trust it to put up a lot of points. So I, I think this is going to be a pretty bad game overall for fantasy wise. What you got? Fantasy wise, my best game, I think I'm going to, Play the homer card here and go Sunday night Eagles at Falcons. Nope. Um, one, man. I like it. You know, Matty Ice playing his his hometown team uh, again. So he usually performs pretty well against them. Uh, looks like Julio is going to be healthy. You know, I I do think the Falcons are reeling a bit after their beatdown from Minnesota in Week One. Uh, where they just didn't get going at all. So I think the running game is going to be uh, a focus for the Falcons to get going. And they got to get Freeman going here. Um, and then the Eagles, I, I mean, what's not to like? So uh, the passing game was there easily in week one. Uh, I think Deshaun can repeat at least some of that success. I don't know if he's going to have two touchdowns this week. Uh, I do see him hitting the end zone at least once though. Um, and I think they're going to get Zach Ertz more involved in this game. So I just like, I like that game as my high game, my low game kind of a toss up between two. I was kind of leaning bears and Broncos, Yeah, but like, I kind of want to go Chargers Lions because a the Lions are a tied team right now. They don't have a win or a loss. <laughs> a tied team, they were so over. they're like okay, they're better than a losing team, but not quite as good as a winning team. Um, and we've already talked about the injuries on the Chargers. I mean it, that that game is really going to be the Austin Eckler show. Um, you know, Phil Rivers and and Keenan Allen. That's that's it. You know, maybe Travis Benjamin gets some love. Probably. Um, I don't know if the Lions are going to throw forty five thousand times like they did the first game, but you know, I just I I don't know if I'm buying that over under in that game. Hey, that would probably 48 be forty seven. Like yeah, forty seven and a half right now on ESPN. Seems high for that game. So I would take the under on that number personally. Um, I just think it's going to be, I think it's going to be an ugly game. Yeah. I got to help the Lions get carry on Johnson involved here. I got him at a couple yeah. of spots and he burned me bad last week. Too. Real bad. Yeah. So. Well, him and Lindsay both tore me up in a couple of leagues. Yeah. It wasn't good all around. All right, man, let's do our sleepers and busts. Uh, I'll, I'll let you start with your sleeper quarterback. What you got? Going with the stash, baby. Nice. Put up or shut up time. Uh, All you people spent $68 plus to get a sweet-looking stash on your squad. You go out and you use that stash. You let it control your team. You let it control your wallet. He's going to be like a cashew and go nuts. Done. All right. That's my quarterback. Hey, 22 for 25 in his first game, and that's pretty good. Exactly. Right, I'm going uh, I'm going with a guy who I never, ever thought I would put on this list, and that's Derek Carr. Uh, dude, that offense really surprised me big time. Uh, now, would I actually start him over a lot of people? Probably not. Derek's cars. But if you are... 
feeling lucky. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, you know, playing Derek Carr could, this could be the week that I, you know, you could actually consider it, uh, coming off yeah. a good week one and facing the Kansas city chiefs, Swiss cheese defense, dude, they were like near the bottom of defense EVOA last year and it did not look any better last week. Nope. They were the team that Minshew went 22 for 25 on. So yeah, there you go. a backup rookie quarterback. I uh, I definitely like Carr this week. He was my my big add uh, in in a bunch of leagues. Um, I I could still go out and get uh get the stash in a couple if I wanted, but I think I'll ride I'll ride with uh, with Carr this week. See what happens. Um, running run back, back, I'm liking what the hell. Um, I'm liking Mostert actually. Uh, I think he could. Surprise some people. Uh, I think he's going to be more the change of pace back than, you know, Breda is going to get the majority of the, the carries there, I feel like. But Moser looked really good in the preseason in the games I saw him in, and he showed a lot of flashes. So I really think he could break a couple long runs off and, and find the end zone this week. Yeah, most of it was good last year. I owned him in, a, in my dynasty league, and he was solid for me a couple different times. Mine's going to be Gus Edwards. Um, I mean, I don't think Baltimore's going to do quite what they did last week, but I still think they'll be up big this week again, playing a, a fairly inferior opponent in Arizona, uh, which is going to lead to a lot of carries for the backup running back, I mean, Gus Edwards. So I think he can he can surprise and, and uh, put us in points. Wide receiver, go. Amendola. I said I didn't like that game, but I mean, you, you've got to like 13 targets. So, <laughs> I mean, it was him and, and Hawk that just brought everything in. So I, I think he can have a, a somewhat repeat performance. I'll, I'll give him uh, I'll give him 10 targets this week. Nine catches. All right. 112 he yards. Game, he will be on. And, uh, and a touchdown. It will absolutely be on everywhere. So it's funny. You're going with a receiver from the game that you didn't like, and I'm going with a receiver from the game I didn't like, and that's Debo. Got to go with Debo, man. Uh, San Francisco wide receiver. He only saw three targets, man, but he was on the field for like uh, for 60 snaps. I think it was like a crazy something like 90-something percent of the snaps, dude. Um, on the field for the most snaps of any receiver, even Pettis which wasn't a big thing to beat considering Pettis had two snaps. Ugh. Um, yeah. Awful. Pettis was miserable. Dude, I, what the hell is going on there? Anyway. I want to um, say he's probably on my, uh, Scott Fishbowl. No, no, I've got good ones. One. He's on one of my best ball leagues and I can't do yeah. anything about it. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, like, I think the 49ers offense is going to be better than it was last week. I don't think it can be nearly that bad again, right? Um, so I like the upside Debo has if he's going to see that many snaps. And, you know, they'll start trusting the, the rookie a little more to actually pass the ball to him more than three times. So, all right, let's start our bust. Who's your quarterback bust? Tom Brady. Nice. Chug. Who's that? <laughs> it's Tom. It's Brady. He's a goat. Yeah, what, what do you mean? It was Tom Brady. <laughs> do you not know football? I thought you were the number four ranker. What? What, what is this? Are you number four wanker? <laughs> He's wicked good. He's Tom. Now Brady has trouble going to Miami um, and winning. Uh, we saw that game last year. The miracle in Miami, they were calling it because. I don't, because Miami won, uh, uh, but Miami's not winning this game. No. I just think that this is going to get out of hand quick, and I think it's going to be a heavy run game. You saw what Baltimore did to them last week and made them look like a, a Pop Warner team um, and ran all over them. So this could be a heavy run game for the Patriots this week. Yeah, I, I can buy I can buy into the Tom Brady not getting a lot of passing and they'll just run the ball. I think this is a Sony Michelle game big time, so I hundred percent agree with you. Um my quarterback's gonna be Aaron Rodgers. I mean 
I know it's Aaron Rodgers, but he's playing another tough matchup, man. Minnesota, we saw what the Bears did to him last year. This O-line does not look great again. The play calling does not look improved. I I don't know what's going on at Green Bay. I mean, dude, maybe, maybe it's Aaron Rodgers at this point. Maybe his ego has really just gotten to him, and he's just, you know, it's just not working out. He's got to, you know, look himself in the mirror and figure out that, look, I can't, I can't be doing this crap anymore. You know, I, I need to play the team game instead of playing the me game. Uh, so until that happens, man, I, I don't know how much you can trust Rodgers. Um, He's no Tom Brady. I'll tell no, you that. Definitely not. All right. He's got your... a wicked stash, though. <laughs> who's, uh, who's your, who's your uh, running back? I'm going with James Conner. Um I, it, Pittsburgh just was an abysmal atrocity last week. Um, so atrocity, nice. That's right, alliteration, <laughs> baby. Um, I, I don't, I don't think that. I mean, coming home, they've got a lot of wounds to lick, um, but that offense needs to find a way to get going. And I think it's going to start with Ben. I mean, he was just miserable in that game. And it affected the run game too. So I, I just I want to see what they can do on offense before I'm really gonna buy into Connor. I wasn't really that high on him this year as it was, anyways. Um, and, and the Seahawks are still a pretty stout defense. So even though they're coming in on the road, at least, at least in the rushing part, <laughs> maybe not it, so much the passing. Well, yeah, not on the passing anymore, but. Um, you know, Legion of Boom is no more. So Ew. now it's more of the boom boom room. But <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> I, I'm just staying away from Connor. All right, more uh, more goodies from AJ there. <laughs> the AJ isms run mine's, deep. Mine's gonna be Todd Gurley. <laughs> uh, again, I mean the, the yards the yards were nice, man. Over 100 yards from scrimmage. But, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the lack of usage, and especially near the goal line. You know, if he doesn't get those goal line carries, he's going to be struggling to be a top 10 back this year, even top 15. I mean, that's where he got – he literally got a lot of his a lot of his points from within the five-yard line. So that's, that's, that's a big worry for me at this point. Who's the receiver? I, I don't want to put him in here. Um because I own him in a lot of leagues and I need to start him due to other matchups. I don't like, but I have, uh, I have Tyler Boyd listed here. Um, I mean, San Fran seemed pretty rejuvenated in the, the, uh, backfield there. So I think Richard Sherman could have a good game and, and that just spells trouble for Boyd. I mean, you already said you didn't like this game as it was anyways. So yeah. I didn't like it anyway either. Um, but I, I just, I feel like it could be a, a down game for Boyd. I can see that. Uh, mine's going to be your boy, Deshaun, DJX. Um, yeah, just another one of those, like, you know, he blows up one week and then has like three really crappy games in a row. And so I just seeing history repeat itself and he's not going to do this twice in a row. Oh, that's that's really the only reason why I, I I picked it. Otherwise, you know, it's a fairly decent matchup. So, you know, most of you are probably going to start him, regardless. Oh, of I'm starting him. So absolutely. All right, who's your 100%. defense stream that is owned in under forty percent of Yahoo leagues? Uh, I'm going with the Packers. Um, that oh, game last really week like it. was just it was a mess. I don't know if it was the layoff people were still in preseason mode or what. Um, but you know, they, they absolutely dominated Chicago and, you know, I think that could be part of their saving grace this year. If Rogers and, and his stash don't figure things out, um, on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he, he was praising that defense after the game. And, uh, I mean, it shows. They, they played their asses off. Yeah, the Green Bay, the Green Bay defense looked a lot better. Um, 
than I've seen it play in a long time. So that might be a very sneaky early season pickup if you can snag them. Mine's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I mean, they looked like I know the Cincinnati Bengals defense is just plain not good, but I mean, they they looked all right against Seattle. And I mean, you know, Russell Wilson usually figures things out, and they just were not able to get a whole lot going against them last week. And then this week, they get the San Francisco 49ers, who look, just look like they forgot how to play football. So, um, you know, kind of a sneaky pick. You know, I, I think they could they could do some damage this week. All right, man. So that's all we got. Uh, week two is upon us. Score right now 10-9 in the middle of the third for this Carolina Buccaneers game. Um, it's still just. I mean, I'm hoping things pick up here. You know, with about nine minutes left in the third, so there could there could be some. Offenses figuring some things out, you know, making adjustments. Let's, let's hope. Let's hope because uh, I don't want another boring Thursday night game. Last year we seemed like we got a bunch of like random high scoring ones. Yeah. This year so far not happening. So I'm not. I'm not looking forward to going back to boring ass Thursday night games. No. Uh, no, it needs to be <clears throat> something worth watching. Um, yeah. Otherwise, people are gonna complain about these Thursday night games again. They're just awful. They're gonna suck. I mean, they they all look like they're. Uh, I mean, at least the first two so far are division rivalry games. So, okay, cool. I get that. You know, if that's the the, you know, whatever the the draw that they're putting in there. Yeah, week three is divisional game. I, it might be all of them. Maybe that's how they have it set up. Oh no, gosh. Eagles pack Eagles Packers is not. Apparently, start the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Defense tonight. If <laughs> every time I look over, they're sacking Cam Newton. So who knows? Oh boy! All right, man. Let's close it out. And uh, good luck, everybody. Week two. As you're playing me, and we will talk to y'all later.